Hello everyone and welcome back to Inside Art Scroll, where the books you read and the people who write them come to life. Today I am privileged to be joined by Rabbi Daniel Gladstein, renowned author and the author of a brand new book on Rabbi Meir Balhanes. Thank you Rabbi Gladstein for being back here. <laughs> Thank you Rabbi Yitzchak. I know you have a busy schedule, Can I Nohara, between Shiurim and, and Svarim and books. You, you're being mashpi on Klai Yisrael in so many different ways. And the latest of which is this magnificent book slash safer uh, on Reb Meir Balaness. Um, but before I get into the book, I just want to wish you a mazel tov. It says on the book jacket, and I, I remember hearing that you reached a milestone in your shiurim, uh, something like 10,000 shiurim recorded online. Am I, am I correct on the number? Halavai <laughs> weiter. Okay, so that's, that's a confirmation. <laughs> Uh, Kanai Nohara, I, I don't know how you do what you do. I know it's multiple shiurim a day on, on very topics. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to give the shiurim, but then you have to also prepare for the shiurim. Uh, so I don't know what your secret is, but chel chel Raisa. The labor of love. <laughs> you, should, you should continue to doing, doing what you do. Amen. And here at Art School, we're exciting that you are continuing to do what you do in the, via the written word. Um, you put out, you know, the various books over the last few years, Mystery and the Majesty, and 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 the, and the others. And here we have something on Rabbi Meir Balaness. So I have to start by asking you, where did you come up with this concept to put out a whole book just on the Tanner Rabbi Meir? So I'll tell you a little bit about the genesis of this idea. It's actually, in a way, inexplicable, because, I mean. Rameir is the Tanakama and the Mishnah. You know, he's one of the many, many of the Tanoim. You have Rabbi Kiva, you have Ragamlia Rav Tarfain. And growing up, I don't think I had any special uh, connection with Rameir, so to speak. All I knew is if you lost something, you know, you drop a coin in the Pushka and the, you tell know, the Kadamer Anini. And then a couple years ago, I had a Kasha on a Gemara. I'll tell you what the question was. I mean, basically, in a nutshell, there's a rule in Shas, the Gemara in Erevin says that we never paskin like Rameir. Okay, we don't paskin like Rameir. The Gemara says, Lo He was very deep, he was very profound. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he could figure out 49 ways to be metame yasheretz, to be metaher yasheretz. He was so deep, Lo yardu chacham So uh, even though, Lo yoyah kamaisai, there was nobody mm-hmm. like him, but we, we don't establish a halacha like him. So I found the Gemara Megillah. The Gemara Megillah talks about uh, various opinions of how much of Megillus Esther you need to read. I know it's Hanukkah time, but how much of Megillus Esther you need to read. And the Gemara brings an opinion from uh, Balai Lahahu later on in the Megillah, <coughs> or Ish Yehudi. And the Gemara says, Rameir holds Tzarech Likrois Kula. You have to read the whole Megillah. And that's how we paskin. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, you know, but we never paskin like Rameir. Why do we paskin like Rameir over here? And I don't know, this idea hit me that I, know, I knew there was one exception to the rule that we paskin like Rameir, and really this entire book is predicated on this Bryce and the Gemara in Kedush and Lamed Vav. The Gemara brings the Machloikes. How does Hashem feel about us? How does Hashem feel about the Jewish people? Uh, so uh, Rabbi Huda's opinion in the Gemara and Kedushin is that it depends how we act. If we're misbehaving, then we're called Avadim. If we're behaving like Kinderlach, then we're called his children. You know, I always would have loved to use Rabbi Huda's uh, opinion, you know, on my kids. You take your kids mm-hmm. shopping, which is mistake number one, you know. And uh, so if they behave, someone asks, who are they? Oh, these are my children. You know, if they're not behaving, you say, I don't know. Their mother asked me to watch them for that. I don't know who they are. But th- that's Rabbi Huda's opinion, amazingly, mm-hmm. that we're not always considered the children of Hashem. Brameir Shita is Benkach u Benkach Nikram Banam. We're always consider the beloved children of Hashem. The Gemara says, even if we're sinning and even if we're Oyvid Abu Dazara, we're not just called as children, we're called Banam Aliyah. Right, it's unconditional. Like, right. It's unconditional. So, and I, I was wondering, so how do we paskin regarding that Machlaikas? And the Rajba has in two chuvais that regarding this Machlaikas, Halacha Krameir, even though we never paskin like Rameir, because the Gemara brings many psukim that support Rameir Shita. And so I had this idea that if the reason why in this one instance we pass him like Rameir is um, because there are many psukim that support him, then maybe 
Reb Meir's shita by Megillas Esther is dependent on his shita of Ben Kach or Ben Kach Nekorambanim. And I found in the Chassam Soifer, the Chassam Soifer says that what was the biggest miracle of Purim? He says the fact that even at the time we were doing the greatest avir in the history of the Jewish people that Hashem made this decree, Lahashmed Laragal Abed, but at that very moment Hashem was orchestrating that if we do tshuva, He's going to bring the geula to indicate Ben Kachu Ben Kach Nekorambanim. So I realized, oh, it's Rav Meir L'shitasei. Mm-hmm. So it's not a... So, okay, that's where it started. Once I had this idea, I said, you know, I think it plugs in in other places, and I think there are other shitas of Rav Meir that are consistent with this or are not consistent with this. So I actually thought, I'm going to write a kuntras, in Lashon HaKadosh, of like 100 pages on Rav Meir. The moment I decided to take on this project, literally for one year time, I have no other way to say this other than the heavens would not let go of me. <laughs> every single parsha, every single parsha, I just, the parsha is about Rameer. The Yom Tif is about Rameer. And for a year's time, I think, Kemad every week, the Shiurim are about Rameer. I'll oh. give you an example. Vayishlach. So Yaakov is about to, to meet Esav. The puzzle says, Vayira Yaakov Ma'oid. He was afraid, Rashi says, lest he be killed. Mm. He was distressed, lest he kill Acherem. Okay, now simply Acherem refers to Esav. And all of the Farshim asks, so say, he was afraid, lest he kill Esav. Why yeah, are we calling him Acherem? So, there, in the full gamut of Svarim, I'm saying from Lamdash Svarim, to Drush Svarim, to Remes, to Soy, Chasidish, all say that Rashi is being Meramez with the word Acherem to Rameir. Because the Gemara at the end of Hayriyos says because of a certain episode that Rameir was, so to speak, dismissed from the yeshiva right. and he was labeled Acherim. Mm-hmm. So Yaakov Avinu, when he was about to encounter Esav, and we know Rameir has a very mysterious lineage. Rameir mm-hmm. comes from Esav. Mm-hmm. So Yaakov was afraid if he would kill Esav, he would not go for Meir. So here it is. As soon as I like, took on this project, and I said, so why is, Yaakov, why is it important to Yaakov to preserve Rameir now in Vayishlach? Mm-hmm. I couldn't shake Rameir. Uh-huh. Couldn't shake it. Now, no, we, we, did you have source material to follow as you were going through the, the, the sugya of Rameir? Or was it totally, you know, kind of like supernatural uh, was, sources yeah. that fell into your lap? It was Namr Siyat Deshmaya. Ideas, questions, thoughts. It just was like... Uh, Rameir came, he wouldn't let go. Uh-huh. I have no other way to explain it. And what's interesting is, just on a personal level, my, my, um, my second son, for what, I'm not sure why, it wasn't named after someone really, we named him Mayor. Yeah. And uh, so maybe, maybe Rameir liked that. <laughs> uh-huh. after, and he was named after Mayor Balanes? No, I wasn't even thinking. You know, no, 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 it was actually, honestly... It was more named after the Malbum. My, uh-huh. my, my grandfather's grandfather was a very dear friend of the Malbum. We named him Mayor. Uh-huh. And the rest was history. <laughs> wow. Now, Reb Meir Balanes, I know there's a, it's, it's such a basic thing and, and almost like fa- part of the fabric of Klal Yisrael. You ask any kid, you ask any adult. Reb Meir is Reb Meir Balanes. Talk about the, the genesis and the... the the formation of his name, that, yeah. that he became synonymous with, with Nisim, with miracles, with Yeshua's, so El Kadamei Arneni. Yeah, so it's actually a very interesting topic. It's definitely shrouded in mystery where this terminology came from, Baal Hanes. I mean, Rabbi Akiva was pretty impressive, you know. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't following the Gemara says. But it's only Rameir is called Baal Hanes. So I hope it's okay if I say this on uh, camera. But... Um, Rav Ruben Margolius has an analysis on this and he questions whether there's real veracity in this terminology, Rameir Balanes. In his opinion, the whole idea of Rameir Balanes, as well as the tzedakah connection, mm-hmm. he feels is sort of uh, an interesting error that has crept in. He says that there was a tzedakah that was connected to the Ramban Reish Mem Beis Nun. And somehow it was thought that it was, because it was, in, it was connected to the city of Tiberia, so 
a printer, look, Art Scroll specializes in, uh, you know, immaculate printing, but not every printer mm-hmm. went through the painstaking job that an editor needs to do. And somehow Ram, the word Ramban became Rameer became Balanes. Balanes. Wow. So, but, but... What's the earl- what is the earliest source that we have for Rameer Balanes? But... That he's referred to as such. Okay, so that's a good question. The Sfardik Oinim, for example, Reb Chaim Falaji, and earlier Mekubalim, for example, I'm going to mention the MS Liakov. Now, you know, the listeners think, oh, I know them, I have the MS Liakov. Reb Yaakov Kamenev, that's a wonderful Sefer. And you should get it also, they came out on Avim and Ksuvim. But there's an earlier MS Liakov by a Mekubal by the name of Reb Yaakov Sha'altiel Ninyo, which a lot of this Sefer is based on. The Ben Eshchai quotes him and Dvarim Nifloim about Rameir Balanes. And he says something fantastic. And I want to share a chiddush. And I'm happy it's on this venue because it's, especially at a time like this, it's Mamish Kedai for Yidin, for Klai Yisrael to be aware of. He says, We know the Rebbe Nisham loves someone who is Malamid Zchus on Klai Yisrael. Someone who could be Malamid Zchus means that even if, let's say, Yidin are not doing something right, you sort of, you become their defense attorney, their advocate in Shammai. Like, you know, I know Art School came out recently with the Kedush HaSlevi, Reb Levi Yitzchak of And uh, he was known as the, great, the defense attorney of the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. And in more recent times, there's an individual who, his life is very inspiring to me. And my grandfather, when he was liberated from the camps, he became very close with this individual, the Kloisenberger Rebbe. Mm-hmm. who was a great hero of the Jewish people, and he rebuilt his chasidus, he rebuilt his life. And I have a friend, Moishi Morgenstern, who uh, sends me clips of the Kloisenberger Rebbe. You could hear him laning the Megillah, and in the middle of the Megillah, he'll divert, and right. he'll break off. In, in, his, own, in his own words, in right? In his own words, in Yiddish, okay. Someone showed it crying, me. weeping, you know, have Rachmanus and Klai, so, Yeshnai am echad, mefuzar, mefayrad. Like, well, what's he doing? Being melamed zuchus on Klal Yisrael, we both have rachmanus on us. We're we're dispersed. We're outcasts. You know, it's two thousand years. You know, what do you, what do you expect after two thousand years? That type of, you know, he would talk to to the Rebbeinu Shalom, and I always knew that this was uh, an important thing, but I never realized how important. It says Rabbi Yaakov Shaltiel Nino, the Rebbeinu Shalom loves anyone who's melamed zuchus on Klal Yisrael. He's meroimim them, and such a person is able to be. Poyal Yeshuais and perform miracles. Ad kan l'shoin the emes and he says since Reb Meir was malamed zchus on Klal Yisrael, therefore he is balanas. So I was thinking, what do you mean he's malamed zchus on Klal Yisrael? Where, where is he malamed zchus on Klal Yisrael? Because he says you have to read the whole Megillah. Ben kach u ben kach. So that hit me exactly. The biggest limud zchus on Klal Yisrael. We banish some, whatever it is. They're your kinderlach. Mm-hmm. That's the greatest possible lima zchos. So I saw the Ben Eshchai writes in a sefer, Adaras Eliyahu, on Chumash. I think it's Parshas Kisisa. Being malame zchos on Klal Yisrael. And don't, I know people are listening. Don't, don't say, you know, Gladstein said, I'm, I'm just telling you what the Ben Eshchai said. Okay? Adaras <laughs> Eliyahu. Take it up with the Ben Eshchai. It's such a big zchos. V'hu adif mital metayra. To, to, to do what? To, to be melamed zchus on Klal Yisrael. It's adif mital metayra. I mean, I never, heard of, I never heard that before. But then in another sefer, Ben Ishchai writes in the sefer, Ben Ishchayel, that he, amazing interpretation. We know there's an opinion in Gemara Brachas, b'makayim shabale tshuva oimdim, tzadikim gemarim enom oimdim, or en tzadikim gemarim lichayim lamayit. He attaches it like this. A Baal Teshuva. What's a Baal Teshuva? Someone who could respond to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He said, Yibbani Shalom. Klal Yisrael are lax in this. It's because of the, the Golos. It's because uh-huh. of the El Parnasa. It's because of Tsar Gidol Bonim. He could, they could respond to Hashem. B'makoim shebalei tshuva oimdim ein tzadikim gemurim yichoyilam l'amoid. That's the highest madrega. Hmm. So now it gave me a little glimpse Rav Meir's connection to miracles, it's not like a super, it is supernatural, but everything has to have a Hezber based on Chazal. It's because he's the ultimate Meilat Yosher and Klal Yisrael. Very interesting. It's very interesting because the, 
almost like the prevailing notion among us, among Yidden, is we, we breastbeat and we, we constantly beating up on ourselves and on whether individually or Klai Yisrael as a whole, it almost became part of the religion yeah. to, to find the faults and to, you know, that's part of, part, no. part of the culture. And, and you're bringing out this point of, of, being, uh, of being a Sanegar, of being a, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Look, you know, uh, the Kleisenberg Rebbe in 1967, you know, in the context of what's going on in the world, when Klaiso were able to go back again to Kleisen Amaravi, and Yidin were euphoric to Dominic the Kleisen Amaravi, Kleisenberg Rebbe had a different take on it. He said it was a very painful moment in the history of the Jewish people. A painful moment to go back to the Kaisal Maravi. He said, Mashal Mahadavardana. Father banishes his kid. He said, I don't want to see you. I don't want to look at you. You can't even be in the same country. And after years and years, the father, he's had, he has gaguin for the kid. He's, he's longing for He said, come back, come back. The kid's coming back. You know, with Harata, he feels bad that he, became, he was estranged. And just as he's about to get to the wall of the castle, stay right there. Stay right there. I want to see my father. Don't move another step. When do move I came this far back. I'm ready. Father said, I'm not ready to see you. Mm-hmm. Says the Kleisenberg Rebbe, when we came back to the Kleisenberg Rebbe in 1967, of course, it was a great simcha. And you know, what is a chus it is to be able to go to the Kleisenberg Rebbe? But recognize the pain of it. Recognize that the Tata is still saying, I'm not ready. Don't go any further. Mm-hmm. So I, I view it that the state of Klai Yisrael today is Yerubayin Shalom is oimed achar kasleinu. We're oimed. We're also oimed. Ad kasleinu. Yerubayin Shalom is not... Is, we haven't reached lo higiyah hazman. So the question is, how do we get past the wall? You know, what's the zuchus that's going to get us past the wall? The Gemara says that when Gavriel was thrown out of the Shemayim. He was thrown me'achari ha'pargod. And uh, because Gavriel did not fulfill the mission Hashem entrusted him with, he tried to figure out how he going to get back in. And all of a sudden, after a little while, Gavriel says, have rachmanus on Klal Yisrael. Have rachmanus on the wives of Tamidi Chacham and they stay up late until their husbands come back from learning. Hashem said, who was that? Mi malami tzchus Bring him back in. Bring him. So to me, that's a very vivid illustration of how you get past the wall. Mm-hmm. So how are we can get past the wall? We need to learn from a mayor. Mm-hmm. We need to learn how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves Klal Yisrael. If Hashem loves the Yidin, so how much Hashem loves it? That doesn't mean like everything is good. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean we're going to whitewash. Right. You know, it doesn't mean, okay, we're not, there's no Musr. There's no instruction. Now, a good father guides his children. But that we have to feel, especially at a time like this, the overwhelming, immense, irresistible... We're irresistible, Takadosh Baruch Hu. We're mm-hmm. irresistible. Kimi de dabri bai, zachar es It's interesting that you mention that because I would say, and I wonder as, a, as an experienced Rav... Uh, if you've seen this, I would say over the last two decades, actually, we've seen in Yiddish culture much more than speaking to people from from previous diaries. They told me it wasn't that way. The last twenty, thirty years, almost like an explosion of a focus in our hashkafa, in our music, in writings, wherever you look on the Rebbeinu Shlomo's love for Klal Yisrael. Right, every year it's a big tzaddik. And every year, to, you know, all, all, all the, the, that type of lingo. Yeah. So it, it, it is kind of this, this uh, theme fits very well with, with that shift. I don't know why, the, why it was it's, a shift. I, maybe look, you could comment on that. I know this isn't a, a, a commentary on, on Kai's in a way, attitudes, but. In a way, I'm not that guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> because my style is I say it as it is. Because ultimately I feel that's the only way to do it. But still, in that context, mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to share with you something. And yeah, so, look, truth be told, 
I first put out a Sefer in Lashon Kodesh. It's called El Akadah Meranini. And this is not a translation, it's an adaption. But there are many, many Mamish Yisoydois that I didn't know a few years ago that are now in the English. I want to share one of them with you. Yeah. Kimat now, every time I speak, I say this over, and I think this is going to answer the question you asked. I think a very important observation to head on. If I would ask you, or really, if somebody would have asked me a few months ago, who does Hashem love more? Our generation? Our parents' generation? Our grandparents? Our grand- I, knew, I knew great people. I mean, I saw my grandfather. My grandfather was a Talmud Muvuk Ramanachim Zemba. Right. You know, we spoke about this. Yeah, we spoke last time, yeah. I mean, he knew, his grandfather was best friends with the Malbim in the 1860s. Right, right, right. I saw Kedusha. I saw Deveka Stakalish Baruch Hu. Of course, they're great people today, but not, not, like, not like was. So somebody would ask, who does Ribbon Shem love more? I don't think anybody would say it's us. So I want to share with you a ha'ara of Rabbi Shimon Schwab. I, ne- I, didn't, I never even knew this. Those who daven us the we say every day, Ahava, Rabba, Ahavtanu. What are the simple translation of those words? Ahava, Rabba, Ahavtanu. Out of a million people, 999,999, we're going to say, with a great love you loved us. Says Rabbi Shab, Rabba does not mean great. Rabba means increasing, expanding, growing. The Rebbe Shalom's love for the Jewish people increases, gets bigger, expands. Rabbi Shab brings a proof. I'm going to take the literary license to apply it. I'm here in Art School Studios to Art School. When I was, we were in high school together, right? Yeah. We were at Masifta. Okay, what did we learn? Seventh, eighth grade. Baba Kama, Baba Look, you know, we're not on camera. Nobody's listening to this, right? But if, for, if you, for whatever reason, weren't paying attention one day and there's a Gemara test, what do you do? So you took out something called Sensino Gemara. Yeah? And you looked at the English translation. And then you realize, actually, the Aramaic is more comprehensible <laughs> than the, the, you know, the old-fashioned exactly. English. And then... Art school came out with the Gemara Marcus, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And even then they had like the like notes on the first. You want Lumbus, yeah, right? Inter- yeah, the insights, right? Yeah, insights. And then I think they came out with Hamafgir. Something Barak Sama. And then they just came out with Gemara after Gemara after Gemara. My parents didn't have Art School Gemara, right? Our parents didn't have it. We had Art School Gemaras. Why? Say, so, oh, because you needed no, not because you need a crutch. Because Riban Shem loves us more, says Rabbi Schwab. Mm-hmm. The expansion of the Torah, the proliferation of, of Harbatz's Torah today, is an expression, manifestation of Hashem's growing love for the Jewish people. And it's not just art scroll. If there's any Rashi and Shas that you struggle with, I'm not saying you should run to something, but you don't understand. You could open up a Masifta Gemara, every Rashi and Shas is Mavur. And you don't know Toysvis, every Toysvis and Shas is Mavur. And art scroll is coming out with Toysvis in English. Why? Because we're on a, on a low... No, because Rebbein Shem loves us more than he loved earlier generations. Wow. That's the side of Reb Schwab. So how, how, do you, how does that jive with Yerida Sadaris? It's a very good question. I want to I I discuss this concept of Yerida Sadaris head on. Because uh, on the one hand, I, when I was a Bachar, I used to go to Rav Vigdor Miller. I grew up in Emmon 31st. I would walk to Rav Miller Shul for about um, three years. Arno Ar- Ar- Ocean Park. Arno Ocean Park. It was quite a long walk. Mm-hmm. I thanked the Rebbein Shem. He gave him that idea to do that. Rav Miller would say, Rabbi Rucham says that we can't even imagine the greatness of our grandmothers. So Rav Miller would be Medayik. He doesn't say we can't imagine the greatness of our grandfathers. We can't even imagine the greatness of our grandmothers. And he doesn't say we can't reach their level. Now can we, we can't even imagine their level. Look, I know my own grandmother. So, Zayn Gesund and Stark. She's, she can't go to Shul on Yom Kippur right now. But when she was able to dive in, in the house, she would talk to the Riban Shalom all day long. Who could reach such a madrega? The way she would talk to the Riban Shalom. So there's Yuridas Hadoi Reis. By the way, the Baal Haleshem brings 
many rayas to the phenomenon. You read this those from Shas. You know, Imri Shoinim, Kemalach Manu Gnei Adam. Imri Gnei Adam Manu Kechamar and Veloi, Kechamar Shobra Pinchas Benyar. Or Imri Shoinim, the Rishoinim, we're, we're like a, a, a nail compared, the earlier generations were like the, the stomach, the internal organs. And mm-hmm. we're, there are many, many rayas. First base Hamikdash had. Uh, the Aroin, the Urim Batumim, the Eish, the Shechina, Ruch HaKadosh, the Second Basin, which did not have. So there's no question we move away from Har Sinai, there's Yerida Sadarais. But there's another way to look at it. Rav Chaim Vital brings that the Arizal told him that your, your, your esteem in Shamayim is greater than even earlier generations. So Rav Chaim said, come on, Rebbe. You told me that I don't even reach the, the nails of right. early generations. Says that Ari, the Rebbein Shalom judges a person his man that he lives in. And now the Sitra Achra is very powerful. So you're more valuable in Shamayim than even earlier generations. Mm. So I ask you a question. Really, the Sitra Achra was out of control in Sfas in the 16th century? Yeah, you can just imagine the, the Pritzos, the billboards in Sfas. To us, you know, it was on a higher madrega than Mea Sharam today. But kafi earlier generations, there was very strong kayachatuma then. So what would Arizal say about a bachar in 2023? Mm-hmm. What would he say about the esteem that such a person has held in Shemayim? So on the one hand, there's Yurida Sadoirois, but there is a very substantiated concept that the love and the esteem HaKadosh Baruch Hu has for a yid today is greater than earlier generations. Mm-hmm. So you say, oh, it's the Ariza, I don't know. In, in Yeshiva, I never learned the Ari. So, Rabbi Rucham, you learned, yeah? Rabbi Rucham in Parsha Shlach writes, and again, check it out. This is what Rabbi Rucham says. You can have a Yeshiva Bachar today. He could be harving on a Rishayim. He doesn't fully understand the word of the Rishayim. In Shamayim, the Bachar is held in greater esteem than the words, of, than the Rishayim of who he's learning. And mm-hmm. then I saw, the publisher says, and if this sounds unusual, look at what Arizal told Rav Chaim Vital. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. The Rav Chaim Vital is quite famous. Yeah. But Hainu Hach really did. Do you read that? Which, which, which makes sense. Do you read that there is, is the reason why the Rav Shalom's love gets greater? And, and because the Nesianus get greater. The Nesianus get greater. Even though, even though previous Dairis, and this is something we always grapple with whenever we schmooze about this, even though in previous Dairis, maybe the Nesianus and Ruchnius were not as severe, but the Nesianus and Gashmius were definitely more severe yeah. in, a, in a significant way. And yeah. today we're blessed with such an abundance. And, and, and Baruch Hashem, for those who live in safe places, we're, we're blessed with relative safety, especially compared to what Yidin dealt with in previous generations. So it, it's, a, it's a deep Indian knot for now. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a big topic. It's a topic that you've grappled with in, in many of Yeshurim, especially when you've you visited Kvarim and different places, and you bring out the history of the times, and you start understanding a context in which the great men of our previous generations lived, which just makes it even, even more astounding how they reached the levels that they did. And uh, much of what we have today is given to us on a silver platter, but like you said, the Yuri Datsanadiris just uh, magnifies um, the accomplishments of today, like Rav Chaim Vital said. Everything we do today is so much grander uh, in the eyes of the Rabbani I think that's a very um, empowering idea. In other yeah. words, you know, uh, to get up for Shach, do, do you know your Shachras tomorrow could be more powerful than a Shachras of a Rishain? Yeah, we have to think of it that way, mm-hmm. you know. I think it's something that our dar needs to hear, especially the young, especially the young adults, who sometimes question, like you, like you just. You know, did. it's a lack of esteem of yeah. per, their own value and the value of what they do. Right, right, right. I don't know if the Navardic approach works so much today. It's more the Slabotka Godless Adam approach that that uh, our yeah. dar needs to hear, you know, about their inherent greatness. Um, as we wrap up this conversation about this fabulous new book, which is just, um, it's like mind-blowing, the, the things that you share in here. Share with our viewers one more revelation, okay. something that's like, uh, you know, eye-opening. So I'm going to tie together a few very important things. Okay. Bottom line is, Rav Meir makes the following announcement in the Yushami. He's Mashiach. Okay? So that's something you've got to find out about. Right. Rav Meir is Mashiach. One thing, he, he's a Tanya. But he doesn't come from uh, David, he comes from Esav. He's yeah. from Achirim. He's Mashiach. Another amazing thing. 
He's buried different than anyone in history. He's buried standing up. He's buried in Tveria. He's buried in Tveria. Do we, do we know for sure that he's buried in Tveria? I don't mean to open up a can I, of worms, you know, but... You know, the only way to find out the answer to that question is also, you got to get this book. There's a <laughs> chapter on that there also. You know, what, what evidence is there that he's buried there, okay? He's buried standing. Why is he buried? And Reb Chaim Falaji writes that a Yid can never be Mesiach Das from Rameir Balanes. So just in a nutshell, when the end of the days come and Hashem's going to be ready to redeem us, it should be very soon, the nations of the world are going to say, come on, they're not better than us. And the only answer really is, yeah, but they're my kinnoach. Rav Meir Shita is ultimately what will be oimed for Klal Yisrael. Therefore, the Ben Yoyada says he's buried standing because that's the zchus that is oimed li Yisrael until the great day of Mashiach. Of. Not that his personality is Mashiach, his shita enables Mashiach to come. And since you can never lose focus on the coming of Mashiach, you always have to think about Rameir Balanas. So of course, you know, it's going to have a nice gold lettering this way. Whatever you're doing, your eyes will always be on Rameir. And uh, until the great day, by the way, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah says that Mashiach, little trivia for the audience, you know, who knows out there, which city will Mashiach appear in? Some people, Williamsburg, Mansi, Barra Park, Flatbush. I always say if it's in New York, it's in, my, it's in Cedarhurst because it's the closest to JFK, right? <laughs> the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah says, Tavaria Amuka Mikulam, Mashiach reveals itself in Tavaria. Why? Because we're going to need Rameir to get up. Paskin, bein kach, bein kach nekram, banim. And then the Rosh Hashanah says, oh, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. Uh-huh. And if I may, you know, people traditionally, you lose your toothbrush, you lose your keys, you lose something, you invoke Rameir like, what's Rameir got to do? You, because you, you, you're a little scattered, you can't find your thing, you, you, you bring Rameir into this. There's an idea that the physical world parallels the spiritual world. And in the world of Rameir, a yid is never lost. No matter how far you may drift, no matter how far you may go from Hashem, you're always connected. You're, you're the beloved child of Hashem. So if in the, in the spiritual world you're never lost, so in the physical world things are not lost either. So that's, that's where I think Rameir comes in. I, think, I wanted to ask you, yes. just so I don't forget, I'm sorry yeah, I didn't mean sure. to interrupt, um, Rameir's yard site. Ah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. So... Traditionally, many say it's Pesach Sheni. So I like to say, because Pesach Sheni is a day of second chances. So in the world uh-huh. of a mayor, there's always another opportunity. But after you read this book, you'll see, Ben Eshchai writes, that on Rosh Chodesh Teves Chanukah, you need to light a candle for a mayor. And he doesn't say why. And many suggest it's because the real yard site of a mayor Balanes is Chanukah. Mm. And that tefillah that we like to say, Elokadamer Anini, Marsha says, Elokadamer Anini means the Rebunish Shalom, who illuminated our lives in the times of Hanukkah, he should answer me. So a mayor is inextricably bound with Hanukkah. It's likely his yard site. The whole tefillah is predicated on the light of Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm very honored that the Hashgacha has it that this should be coming out. Coming out on, it, Mamish, it's really uh, unbelievable Mamish that it's for coming Hanukkah. out for Hanukkah. Yeah. You've done an unbelievable job here, giving the, the, all these uh, amazing sources and really opening our eyes, no pun intended, to the, to the world of Reb Meir. Kla uh, Yisrael's Meilitz Yosher. So just as Reb Meir has been Meilitz Yosher all these years for Kla Yisrael, you should continue to, being, to be a Meilitz Yosher for you, Amen. Uh, especially in the schus of bringing his Torah and, and his background and his inspiration. Amen. To call Yisrael, and, I, and it's a, it's a, this book contains messages that will resonate with people. It talks to, you know, you think we're Meir Balanes, it's esoteric, which uh-huh. it is on some level. Right. But in this book, what you do is you bring it down to our level. Anyone can read this. Men, women, children, Bachram, girls, read the book, be inspired by Reb Meir's message, and, uh, and you should continue to to do what you do. Thank Wonderful you work, and we thank you again for coming out here to talk. Thank you, thank you.